All right, so pretty much this video is gonna be about the artificial disc replacement that I received, which was in my uh, L4, L5 disc that had a six millimeter um, protrusion. Uh, it was to the point where I couldn't feel my legs anymore. I couldn't walk, I couldn't sleep on my back. Uh, it was a pretty horrible thing actually. However, hopefully this uh, information that I'm going to be giving you guys uh, will be enough where it might make it might help you make a better decision, and hopefully it's just going to be um, just get my point across. Okay, this is not my advice. This is just more about what I researched, what I went through, and hopefully uh, you find it beneficial. All right, so to get started, I'm going to talk about the current disc that we offer here in the United States, which is Pro Disc and the Active L. Uh, both of them are both a ball and socket type of disc. Um, both of these are great as far as being the standard of care. They have a kill design, most of them, uh, like the Protus, for example. Uh, kill just pretty much means that it goes through the, they do make a little cut between both vertebrae, the top and the bottom, to put it in place. And then they put a little, pretty much a plastic ball socket type of uh, thing to hold it to enable movement of your back muscles or not back muscles but help your back have mobility still uh, the reason why this might be beneficial for some people versus fusion which is where they pretty much remove the disc uh, use about four screws and let both vertebrae fuse into one big bone uh, which is fine for a lot of people especially people that get the L5S1 fusion it's actually probably the most common one and probably the one that has the better success than the rest. The only problem with fusion is that sometimes it'll lead to other, uh, it's called adjacent segment disease, meaning that the disc above and the disc below, depending where it's at, it can take extra stress and can either uh, wear down the disc or make them herniate as well and then now you need another fusion. So that's why artificial disc replacement is kind of a, a good alternative to prolonging the disc life of your adjacent disc. Um, so that might help out. Now, so like I said, in the United States, we offer a pro disc and the active L. The active L, uh, it's not a kill design, um, but I'll show you guys here in the pictures as you see above. Um, it's still a good design. I thought about getting it myself. Unfortunately, I didn't have the insurance to get the surgery here. So what I ended up doing, I ended up going overseas to Germany with uh, O and Z, and I ended up getting the LPESP artificial disc. Uh, this one, I chose this over the M6L. Um, the reason being uh, the M6L, based on all the research I've done, whether it's been researched in other countries that I've used it, or patients on Facebook groups, for example, there have been so many failures on it that for me, it was out of the question. Um, not only that, but I'm one of the biggest people that has had artificial disc replacement to my knowledge, uh, especially when I went to Germany. They said I was one of the biggest ones they had it on there. Um, I'm still going through struggles here and there. Um, I would say I'm 90% to 80% back to normal as far as my back movement goes. I can do everything normal, I can walk, I can do things. The only problem I still have is I can't really like run out, I can't run. Not that I can, not that I did really in the beginning, but I can't squat, I can't put tremendous amount of weight on my back. Um, to compress the disc uh, but I can do like for example going to the gym I can do machine stuff like that no problem um, I still I still definitely recommend losing a ton of weight before you get to surgery it just makes the whole recovery process easier and better um, it's something that I'm struggling with but uh, I digress so back to the, the artificial disc uh, the reason like I said I didn't go with the M6 uh, overseas was because it just had too many failures and most of the time a lot of the doctors that I've read and that I've seen based on the Facebook groups and people's stories is a lot of them go there and they end up having failures and they need to get a, re um, a revision surgery and most of the time if they had an M6 they end up getting the LPSP if uh, their disc or their vertebrae allows for it if not they just give them a, a fusion instead so when I went to ONZ that was the first thing that I told the doctor I said I'm either getting a fusion or an LPSP I'm not going to get in the M6L, which I'm glad I chose that option. I know a lot of people have great success with the M6L or the M6, um, and that's fine. 
I'm happy for them. I'm glad if their way of life has gotten better, great. But based on what I researched and everything that I found, that is not worth it for me. And that's why I ended up choosing the route going with the LPSP, which I'm kind of glad I did now. Um, I, the LPSP just had a great track record overall. There was no fail. There wasn't really failures. On the one failure I did see from the LPSP was due to uh, a patient going through chemotherapy, and I guess the chemo and the chemicals in the chemo uh, disintegrated the what's in between the titanium, which is like a I don't know polymer, whatever it is. What's in the center? The rubbery polymer substance, whatever it is. I could be saying that wrong, but that's what disintegrated and the guy needed a surgery and ended up getting a fusion after it. That was the only failure I saw. So that's why I went that route. The M6 still just has too much, it has records of the metal shavings uh, breaking off. Uh, it's ripping. Um, I think it's a poor design. Uh, in my opinion, when I went to Germany, I told the doctor if they can do the pro disc on me or the Active L because that's what they used to use over there about 10, 20 years ago. And then the United States adopted, uh, or ended up taking doing the same thing after they got enough research. Uh, so yeah, pretty much I ended up going with the LPSP. Um, once again, I know a lot of people love the M6 and that's great. Um, and if that's you, then I'm happy for you. But for me, it wasn't the risk that I was willing to take. I, I had to pay out of pocket because my insurance wouldn't cover me here in the United States, but uh, Dr. Burstead told me that, yeah, I needed the LPSP. Um, it was great. He said it was a successful surgery. I am going on almost two years now. So this is March 2021. My surgery was in June 2019. So I'm going on two years. So far, I'm okay. Don't get me wrong. I still have back problems here and there. Um, and if you guys have any questions and you want to get more into detail about certain questions on it or for me to make a video on it, Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get into it as much as I can in case I forget something on here. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, like I said, the LPSP, if you're able to do it, if you're thinking about it, I def definitely recommend the LPSP. If you're between L5S1 and your option is a fusion with a hybrid, that's fine too. Um, I technically have two herniated discs, the L45, L5S1. L45 was where I got the LPSP disc, which I'll show you right here, the x-rays. Uh, but the L5S1 has a small herniation still. The doctor told me it's well enough where I don't need surgery and I can prolong it and it's better if I can prolong it as much as I can. The only problem I'm still having is I, if I lay down on my back, which I can, it'll start, my legs start going numb and then I'll start feeling pain after a little while. But so I choose not to do that. But yeah, pretty much I end up doing that and now I end up going uh, along the route where I sleep sideways. I've been sleeping sideways for this long because uh, there's no other option for me. Uh, some things that I definitely recommend for some of you, if you're having issues with this, I recommend getting a therapeutic mattress. That'll help out. Um, as far as cervical goes for artificial disc, um, I can make a separate video about that. But once again, it looks like the LPSP is the best option. The LPSP, the, the ESP for cervical is a good option as well. Um, just like I said, if you have any questions, just please let me know and I'll try to get, I'll try to make another video about it. This is primarily a tech channel, so this is more on a, on a artificial prosthesis that I'm getting into, medical technology. So I hope this uh, helps out some way, some form. And um, I strongly recommend if you want to get more information and get more detailed information from people's experience, I recommend going, going on to a Facebook group. There's a ton of people that I talk to the whole time. There's a lot of successful stories there. Um, sometimes you can avoid getting an artificial disc if you have a herniation. Uh, my first surgery was a microdiscectomy, which failed horribly. Um, I feel like I was worse off than my before surgery. Um, after that, they recommended um, after that they recommended a fusion, which I did not want. Um, I don't mind getting fusion if that's the last option, but I didn't want that, so <clears throat> I ended up getting I ended up opting to go to Germany and getting the artificial disc. Um, I'm glad I made that decision. And like I said, the main reason for my decision was to help avoid or help prolong the adjacent segment disease, which like I said before, it's when the discs take more pressure on the opposite sides that are not damaged. Um, so yeah, uh, if this video is anyway helpful, I hope 
it can help you out. Um, the only the only big thing I want to get out of this video is look, do your research, get your life back, because this sounds crazy, but when you have such horrible back pain, it's uh, I think it's the second biggest surgeon in the United States. So first is heart, and then I believe it's back, or vice versa. But it gets it can get you into depression. That I I told myself I prefer to be dead than to be the way I was uh, a year later. Uh, it's just a horrible, painful thing to go through. Um, you can take all the pills in the world, and they do not help at all. I took bike cut in, I took Percocet. Nothing helped at all. Like they did nothing to me, but knocked me out sometimes. But like I said, uh, I recommend researching those options. Um, if you currently have a herniation or a small protrusion, I do recommend doing everything possible to help or let your body heal itself enough where it might be good enough. Um, I did have a herniation, I guess three, four years ago. It was small enough, but I didn't know at the time. And I guess my body healed enough. Now I recommend taking things like turmeric, um, black seed oil, uh, naproxen, Advil. Those are the things that I was taking that helped me out, so I might help out some people out, else out. Uh, I'm also going to a chiropractor, which is can be bad too, but it helped me out. It brought my pain down from like a nine to like a six or a five, so I definitely would recommend you research and, and find more things about that as well. Um, like I said, if you guys want me to make any video specifically for any topics, I can make a video about it with artificial disc replacement. Um, Hopefully you guys like it. This is the reason why I haven't been making videos in a long time. I had too many health problems, but uh, hopefully I start making videos again and hopefully this helps you out in some way, shape or form. Um, I'll get into the regular videos of technology and making money and all that other stuff, but hopefully I wanted to make this video because I feel it would be helpful for some. And if it is, great. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Peace.